hospitality industry is a diverse industry which has a lot of teams to work and a lot of teams to manage. In the teamwork, the concept in this industry, we need to really focus on the team culture and dynamics, then conflict resolution, the productive conflict resolution, cross-cultural teams and virtual teams. Today we have a notable alumni, is none other than Kevin Jaman here to talk about his success story and also team team spirit, team work and leadership. So Kevin, how are you? I'm good myself. Nice to hear that. Thank you. All right. Now Kevin, uh, we'll go back to school days. I want to hear your English memories. Okay. So first of all, it's very humbling to be here and meet you after a long time. Thank you. So to get into the story, so I joined uh, William and Liz right after my um, A-levels. I had no, no break at all right after that. I joined here. Fortunately, I made the right choice of coming here. So I think it was in 2015, which I joined. You're very young, very small. Very it's... immature as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say immature, so you yeah. were, yeah. Uh, you are a team. Yes. Yeah. So I joined in 2015 uh, to. That's right after your uh, A levels. Right or... after my A levels, even before I got my uh, results out. You mean it's 16 or 17? 16. You were you were 16, right? I was uh, 19. 19. You were 19. Yes. Okay. So uh, I joined here to do my advanced diploma in hospitality management, because uh, even throughout my school years I had. Uh, I would say um, a vision to be a part of the service industry uh -huh. of some sort. Service industry, not the hospitality person. No, I didn't want to narrow my opportunities. So I put my range on service industry and wanted to see how it goes. Because to but you are coming from a background of hotelier. You are the third generation of your old hotel company. Yes. So why service industry? Yes. So. Uh, I believe of uh, earning my own wings. So it's true that I was born into a family which has a, a hospitality background, a hotelier background. Uh, and I cannot deny that it's in my blood because it has been going on for three, uh, two generations and maybe in the third. But so I, I humbled down to uh, my... Your friends out there would like to know what is your hotel company which you own? in future okay so i don't want to talk about it much it's just that uh how to say um my grandfather uh, started a small enterprise somewhere down in katunayaka and my dad has uh, been able to uh, upbring it to a um how to say franchise brand so i believe uh, everyone is uh, hoping that i'll take it a step further yeah, in future in future yeah not right now don't worry so yeah so the reason i said service industry is because uh, i didn't want to narrow my mind uh, just because i was coming from a background doesn't mean i have the 100 percent capacity to do that but i knew that i had the passion to serve people make uh, someone else's day better with a smile of course you have the passion to serve people that i should say that you are one of uh, one of the privileged students in this campus who got the opportunity to serve for both Prime Minister and the President of this country. So, why don't you talk about that experience yes. before we getting into further in yes. about So, I have to give thanks to you, I guess, for that opportunity for noticing uh, my ability or at least my passion to do something of that scale. So, if you if it's okay for me to talk about the day, of course, yes. yes. I have I have a photograph here of the day. I brought it for you. Okay. Right. So you can we can while it is on my hand, you can talk about it. See, yes. I can hear, I can see that you are giving instructions to kitchen team and yes. your FMB team, yep. and the prime minister is here, and I blocked your view here. Remember that? Yes. Uh, right. Okay. So um, this is just a picture of a major thing which went on for at least a month where we spent preparing for both the Prime Minister and the President at the time of the country. Um, so it was overwhelming for me because I'm just a school leaver. I have no experience of what sort of uh, 
logistics and menus and what not can come through uh, in an event like this and to say that it's I'll have to take the responsibility of the success of the failure of serving my own president and my prime minister but with the help with the lecturers you, you were the event in charge right? you were the fmb manager or the ceo i was uh, so it was only a fmb fmb part yeah so FMB. you were the fmb manager yes yeah. so i was in charge of both the operation of serving the president and the prime minister uh, and we had two locations to at the run at the same time yeah. one at campus and one at the other location so being a student in this campus now you are serving to the president and the prime minister how was that experience i mean on that day how 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 did you feel it yes um, i would like to apologize for few people for my attitude on that day because <laughs> uh, it was a overwhelming situation for me but i had a great team i think you I had so many security checks and the phi yes, checks and so on exactly. so forth no? as i was saying it was being planned for over a month i guess so i had the staff around staff in the sense students working uh, looking for my guidance for the function around 65 students to serve both the president and the prime minister on that day yes 65 people around 65 people yes yeah. okay so uh, uh, did you uh, i mean uh, did you find it easy or difficult or how did it go in that day i mean okay so i didn't want to take it as a problem i took it as a challenge because i knew i had the backbone with the lecturers to guide me if i'm going off track i believe the team also trusted in me because by this time i have handled few uh, minor events and i have shown my colors and gained my wings i guess so the team also had some trust in me uh yes okay. team was believing on you Yes. Right? And I have some some of the other other activities here when when you are in school this is one of the events that you have participated yeah uh you are here uh, the a beach party concept yes. right then we have a uh a, a tour remember the tour we went to Ananthaya yes right? I try to mo- remember most of the days yes yeah, yeah. you try to remember yes. yes right this is one of the pictures and this entire batch is here yes. actually your batch is one of my favorite i would say one of my favorite i still love batch 8 i still miss miss my batch 8 uh, friends right so they did a superb uh, event you, uh, you it was prastan uh, deputy high commissioner of australia was the chief guest where you got opportunity another opportunity to serve for deputy high commissioner so tell me about that experience so to give this is your I mean exactly, remember yes, remember yes, that i remember the yeah. fair, fair party because it so we uh, miss manura stefan yes and, uh, as i was just going to say uh, i should give credit to both manura and uh, stefan who were who were together with me in charge of the function um so with the challenge given by you on that day um to take things a step further from the sort of functions that uh, has been happening in the campus at the time I think we were the f- one of the first few uh, campus I um, mean first few batches to do that scale no, of a function. No, you were the first batch. You were the first batch to do a mega scale event. Out yes. out do mega scale event yes. nearly 1000 to 1500 people. Yes, and I don't think uh, the campus has seen uh, that much of a budget budget, raise, yeah. budget raise for a function. So it is very interesting your budget you re, uh, you found your own sponsorship it was nearly yes. about 3 million or 2 million close to a uh, north of 2 million two, yes. yeah 2 yeah. million so this is very important so they have they have went they found their own sponsorship to the project right talk about it. to give kudos to my batch um, so you have to understand that most of us are just school leavers so within a course of one and a half years to raise a budget of uh, almost 3 million is uh, brilliant yeah In- you got only 3 three, 3 weeks no 3 months no 3 months 3 months to get a sponsorship of yes. 3 million so and the funny thing is out of the 3 months we spent around 2 months deciding what type of a event, fa- it is, event it's is. going to be so finding sponsors was a bit lacking but still we made it happen but then you got another opportunity to uh, meet the uh, high commissioner of pakistan Yes, that also you got yes. the opportunity. So, so that you are one of the one of the few uh, characters in this campus who got these opportunities to uh, uh, work with or rather to serve presidents, prime ministers, and high level of uh, 
diplomatico so thank you uh, <laughs> yeah talk about that yeah. the ex, uh, the high commission experience and also you went to uh, australian high commission too yes we yeah. did uh, yes yeah. so as so I they have your thinking of what we are doing here exactly so as i was saying we were just trying to figure out what to do but we weren't going to settle for anything lesser than great so we were hitting on high commissioners and uh, you know high as we can see in the country, country. to uh, make this even a success so which it was uh, i wouldn't say a waste of time because uh, that experience i got at that time will never come in my career at least for the next 3 uh, or 4 years yeah so basically we got the uh, you got the opportunity to work with the australian high commission well as the indian cultural center no exactly. you are narrowed down to a indian event yes it was mostly a asian event but asian event it asian, was an asian event asian event a multicultural but mostly focus on uh, asia but at the same time we had the support from the australian high commission as well to carry this event forward so before i uh, before i want before i step into your career i would like to hear your college days st joseph's colombo day so talk about your experience i'll serve a coffee for you of course thank you sugar without just sugar? one please okay hey pinga kaun chahiye no not like not really i don't think i have anything to worry yet <laughs> okay so in school you would you were doing some uh, sport Yes um I would say in school I was very motivated uh, to do extra curricular activities so I was uh, mainly involved in cricket uh huh I started my Were you in first year? Yes I was uh, but I started cricket uh, when I was in somewhere grade 3 I okay. think uh, around 8 years old okay and I continued that till I actually left school as well and still the habit lies in me So uh I I really like to hear a lot of experience uh, in your school days college days uh, okay back in the days back in the singhala day. literary association and yes. uh, athletics and I see that you have gone through my CV <laughs> uh so yeah as i was saying i was a part of a lot of extra curricular activities thank you um i was in part of the singhala association um i have lost track of what i was in started but mostly i was uh, into sports i did a bit of athletics i did junior diving and played cricket throughout my school years and also i was a uh, part of the all servers union which is very humbling to say i guess that's the first place i found the passion to do serving uh-huh. because if you know in a church there's this uh, kids who will be serving the priest uh, giving a helping hand I think through that is what I found the passion passion in hospital. I understood that I enjoy doing this and helping someone out uh, of uh, making something happen here. Yeah. Uh so again coming back to uh English time, right? English you spend a lot of time here. Yes. The be- I would say the best time of your life you were here. 19 to 21 you were here, right? Yes. Right? So how how did the studies going along how did you feel your studies you were part of a lot of extra curricular activities in the campus but also you were excelling in your studies yes um so how do i say uh, it was a big eye opener as i said before i think i made the right choice of uh, joining william anglis because it was a big eye opener uh, to what is out there in the world and in the industry and what to expect and what uh, attitudes of myself which i have to adjust to fit into the industry uh, so we had a lot of variety of subjects to go through mostly uh, most of them were done by you and other lecturers who are here so i guess um, if st joseph's uh, gave me character in life uh, william anglis gave me the personality of a hotelier character and personality very interesting fact yeah so i ha- i got the character to be a hotelier through william anglis and i always i'm always grateful for that so at your graduation yes. you got your fmb uh, award special uh, award for fmb right yes. talk about this moment okay. at your graduation so i this uh, for some uh, who are getting this award i don't know maybe it was in shock for whoever got it but um, 
this award was something which was on my head uh, right after the first year of uh, uh, finishing of the first year since I joined. I remember having a conversation with uh, Mr. Manohara uh -huh. uh, in his office uh, asking, uh, look, um, I want to get this at the graduation. What else am I supposed to do to get this? Okay. Mr. Manara was our former senior academic head at William English Institute. Yeah. So uh, I believe he was a bit shocked because uh, hardly anyone would approach him with the. Hardly anyone would ask this question. Even to date, people who not, do not ask this question. Yes. How, what else to do to get this award? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the advice he gave uh, was a big shock to me because what he said was um, it's good that you have a plan of what you want to achieve but uh, just don't narrow your mind on that award itself maybe you can end up uh, getting something uh, a bigger or a different award so I didn't I still got what I wanted but uh, the advice was uh, like very gold to me because it's like I didn't, from that day onwards, I decided when I want something, not really to focus my all my energy on that because there can be other opportunities. The and bigger picture. The bigger picture. He always taught me, he always taught us to look at the bigger picture than narrow our vision on things. So now, Kevin, um, you start your career, very interesting organization. You still work for the same organization, Hilton International. Yes. So, talk about your career now. Okay. So, if I'm to say how I got Finish in... Finish your coffee up. Of course. Uh, so, I got into the management training program, Southeast Asia Management Training Program of Hilton while I was in university. You were in university. Yeah. Yes. So, still I didn't... I choose not to waste time. Uh, by the uh, latter part of my journey in William Anglis, I joined um, uh, the management training program. So, uh, it's uh, I don't want to talk much about talk that. Talk about the management training program where it will be an encouragement for new students and also okay. to your friends yes. who are interested to come and join or whatever. Okay. So, to speak in general of any management training program, uh, to a young individual, young leader who is in the industry today, it's a good opportunity because... Uh, that is Southeast Asia management tree yes so Asia. it's just not uh, relevant to sri lanka when you graduate you get the certificate for as a southeast asia graduate it doesn't say that you were in sri lanka it does not matter so i'm basically a southeast asia graduate, graduate. so those kind of programs uh, identify the young leaders at a very raw stage and they give the opportunity for them to um, uh, build uh, get experience uh, throughout a course of one and a half years uh, to have a jump of around five years in their career. So, so it was one and a half years program, two years program? It was a one and a half year program which the first year I was based in Sri Lanka hmm. and this last six months I was given the opportunity to work as a duty manager in, um, in a hotel in Phuket, Thailand. So that is a good experience because no one would get this overseas experience while the management training program is on. So, uh, tell, uh, will you elaborate or rather enlighten us about uh, the Thailand experience? Of course. In the Hilton chain. Yes. Um, so, as I was uh, in the latter part of the first uh, year of the management training program, I was asked, what am I looking for? Like, what experience am I looking for as I am about to be sent abroad? So, my request was from my leaders was uh, to send me to a property which has a lot of turnover of reservations. Okay. So I would. A lot get, of turnover. So how how is it? Turnover like in hotel. So in that hotel, uh, they have uh, around six hundred odd rooms. Mm. And it's in Thailand, of course, so it's not. It's in Phuket here. Yes, so it's not any uh, long stay. I guess it's always uh, short, short stays. Okay. So the turnover per day will be around three hundred to four hundred. Okay. Check in, check it's out. It's a big hotel. It's a very big hotel. Okay. So, uh, what I, I have a, a area to touch upon with you because we started with teamwork and things like that. Yeah. I I love to hear your cross cultural 
teams how did you get that exposure the cross culture yes so being in phuket was a good experience because it was a culture which i'm not used to we sri lankans are mostly used to how do i say maybe europeans americans we're used to that type of culture but southeast asian culture is totally so you were mainly dealing with what sort of a clientele there in um, phuket yeah the so from what i see the main market is uh, how do i say chinese chinese chinese, chinese. would be the main travelers to there are wide ranges uh, from um, how does it russian a lot of russians, russians yes russians. so but most that's a resort that is a resort that's yes. a resort yes that's a resort so you you got your exposure and you broaden yourself to a uh, far east uh, to yes. a, right yes. so that's what you're trying to say yes so what other activities you mainly know it's only a front office or just uh... front office because i was asked to uh, focus on the front office operation of so it's very interesting in the school you were mainly into fmb won the fmb award now you are uh, focusing your career in front office Yes. So in in management really. Exactly. Yeah. Because I don't believe in uh, why why this shift front office how food and beverage to uh, front office. You see Mr. Kazun I think uh, at a young age it's easy to make a sideways move in a career than uh, at a higher stage because my ambition is to be a, a hotel owner. Hotel owner. Yeah. My ambition is to be a, a leader that anyone would look up to so if I am to Uh, focus my energy only in FMB, yeah. only in front office. I'll be lacking on my knowledge so on the other side. What I meant is specialization. Yeah. Specialization. So, uh, I mean, you have to select one area anyway. No? Yes. To focus. Yes. Right? So, this shift was was a problem to you, or was encouragement to you? Or? It was a problem because, as I was saying, in FMB here, it was a very aggressive approach. Yeah. and it's go get from the start but when i made the switch to front office uh, i had to tune down myself a bit and smile a little bit more because i'm always in front of people i guess that's a problem everyone has because i uh, lack of lack of smile in the face uh, but yeah it was a good experience it was a challenge to me and it's always good to challenge yourself yeah you need to yeah I yeah. always learn because I don't think if I am doing what I am comfortable all the time, I'm not learning anything. So it was a good experience. So now you are coming back to Colombo. Yes. Then you were posted in uh, Hilton Colombo residence. Yes, I'm currently occup. Uh, my occupation is at Hilton Colombo residence as a assistant duty manager. So again in front office, uh, right? Yes. So you have uh, gone a, a long way in a short time, right? right? Which is very interesting. And here, as we discuss. Uh, at the initial stages i like to hear this the team culture how do you look at a team culture or the team dynamics for you okay so i think uh, as i was saying i went to phuket uh, looking for experience in uh, how to handle uh, a high turnover but i think my biggest le- learning point was in phuket of uh, handling teams and uh, Uh, winning the hearts of a team in a short period as six months because, uh, as I say, I don't smile much, and Thailand is called the land of smiles, yeah. so I didn't match there. So it. So, but interestingly, Thailanders are very, very fascinating, very nice people. Yes. And talk about the, about Thailanders, the experience with Thailand. Exactly. So I had a hard time. Yeah. Uh, gaining their trust and uh, making them accept me as a person because of the different attitude maybe I was having but as I was saying I did learn about uh, managing high turnover but my biggest uh, learning point was uh, adjusting myself I had to stand on my values but adjust myself tune down tune up a little bit to fit in uh, a certain culture as even here we learn about uh, managing cross cultures so even those things came to my mind so you you are trying to say in your context uh, in the team culture cross cultural aspect is much important to you yes so we'll hold a career for a while i wanted to hear about you right okay. so what are your hobbies what do you do at your leisure okay Leisure is something very hard to come by in this industry. So, <laughs> anyone who's listening, uh, you won't don't look for leisure much. But 
when I get time, I like to uh, really relax, tune down, because uh, work can be hard sometimes. Work can be hectic, even like given the recent pandemic. Uh, it's uh, experience even you and I, none of us in this uh, generation have faced. But I really like to uh, maybe go a bit online to uh, gain knowledge about knowledge about something that I don't know about. Maybe how the economy is going. Maybe how uh, what are the new trends in the world. And I play a little bit of guitar myself. Okay. So. So basically, there are also you look at little management things. Yes, uh, time is very valuable, right? Yeah, time is very valuable. <laughs> yes. So now, Kevin, um, uh, you brought this conversation to a very important point. You said uh, uh, St. Joseph gave you uh, character, but Anglis gave you the personality. How does the Anglis qualify? Meaning that William Anglis, the uh, the learning environment and the building and so on and so forth. That's what uh, yes. you're talking. About. How does the William Anglis qualification impact you? Um, so talking about William English Sri Lanka, the thing that I mostly appreciate is most of the lecturers who are here are actually products of the industry itself. It's no, it's mostly everyone is from the industry who have work experience of they know what they are talking about. They can walk the talk. Whoever the lecturer. Basically, they actually they are part and parcel of the industry. Yes. So point being first that whatever they are teaching, they have done it they can uh, preach what they live and the second thing is because of uh, the lecturers who are here which still you are keep in contact with the industry even opportunity career opportunities and career trends are easily recognized by you all which we get to get the exposure of the industry even before we get into the industry so uh, so then again it's we are yet in sri lanka so how does this uh, the qualification towards overseas exposure and when you go to Thailand and things like that. Did people know about William Anglis and how did this happen? We have a campus in uh, Bangkok also. So yes. how this, uh... People do recognize the name William Anglis to say. Uh, to give my personal experience recently because I'm looking at my next uh, educational uh, qualification. So I applied for this uh, particular program which when I said that I had a William Anglis uh, qualification uh, the journey become a, became a bit shorter to the goal. So people do recognize this uh, qualification still in the industry and it will always be uh, my backbone in the industry, I guess. Nice to hear that. So you uh, said uh, you selected this industry, it's, uh, it's because of family business? Or? Unlikely, I don't really prefer to be said that because I'm on my own journey, yeah. but yes, I was born into the culture. Why? Uh, were you in uh, in a dilemma of selecting uh, service industry and hospitality? So now you selected hospitality. What made you to uh, think or to come to hospitality? So when I was in campus, I was in doubt, but uh, I guess it's... Uh, meaning before the campus, even within the campus, you had the doubt? No, no doubt as in I wasn't sure which area really? I should take, but I guess the universe served me the management trainee program, which out of around 200 applicants, I was one lucky uh, applicant out of 10 who got selected. So I guess that's a sign right there. So to say that this is the path I should go. So right now I'm taking that path down. Kevin, uh, what made you to select this industry? I mean, I know you have a background of hospitality and yes. hotelier. Okay. But and also at the initial stages, you told me that uh, you wanted to get into uh, service industry, yes. but not particularly hospitality. So why why hospitality per se? So, Mr. Kasun, how would you like to uh, be pampered by someone? You go on a vacation and there is a welcome drink at the start. You go to your wonderful room. There's a spa, there's nice dinner. You would enjoy pampering, right? Yeah. As a person? Oh, yeah, I was in that life, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So in the same like, there are a lot of people in this world who, who likes to get away, who likes to unwind, and who likes to be pampered, who likes to have a smile on their face. I have a passion of making someone else smile. Okay. Which it's I very enjoy. interesting because you want to 
made possibility or rather uh, i would say the passion made possibility that's yes. what you're trying to say yeah. right so at the initial early i talked about at the initial stages i was talking about a uh, virtual teams right now the con- country and entire globe is facing a, a, a very big pandemic how does this virtual teams were to impact you in terms of business in terms of work true uh, so the corporation i work for was always uh, virtually managing uh, properties to start with so we had the foundation uh, to execute uh, while this pandemic happened so work wise uh, not much have changed because we were already prepared and we were ahead of the industry um, so yeah we were already prepared for this so meaning the virtual teams uh, is it difficult for you to work or is it easy or you want to see people or you want to be an introvert or working with virtual teams i believe the first advantage would be it's it doesn't uh, procrastinate okay so it's always on to the point and the, people on to the their, point yeah. yes so i guess the physical factor is a bit lacking it's something that we all have to get used to but i guess this is very effective uh, and it's a good opportunity for everyone to multitask as well because and it's not like anyone has an option now to do virtual or otherwise so i guess even the industry has been moved forward by this pandemic to looking at a positive way now you are serving as a uh, assistant duty manager at yes. Hilton Colombo residency yes right you always find um, ways and means for uh, uh, productive conflict resolutions yes. meaning you have the customer complaints also internal staff uh, yes. issues and how do you make it productive okay so i think a uh, conflict is uh, you can have it in two ways a conflict can always be healthy because it gives out that the other person has his own opinion which uh, me as a leader and anyone as a leader should learn to respect and when someone else has a, a opinion and when it doesn't agree with the corporation or it doesn't agree with my point of view i believe uh, patience is number 1 and respect is number 2 Okay, patience is number one. Respect is number two. Yes. What else? And uh, to see if you have your patience and you respect the other person, and if see if I you and I have a conflict of what to do and what not to do, I have to respect you the fa- respect the fact that you are trying to give something out better for the betterment of the corporation. So it's not that it's a personal grudge that you would have with me. It's just that you want to do your best to the company and I want to do the best. it's just that we both of us our attitudes are having a clash so if both of us can understand that and keep keep in mind that the corporation's well-being is the goal i think there will be always have the conflicts and it's as long as you respect each other and keep in mind that this is all for the betterment of the corporation i think uh, nothing can go wrong okay good william english institute at slate produce better graduates uh, better hoteliers or better tourism professionals to local industry well as the uh, international industry so kevin is an example who is working for, for an international chain also we have people who are working for uh, other international chains like shangrila marriott sheraton and you list the names the list is bigger and bigger so kevin at last but not the least point but i want here to hear a message to your friends graduates and alumni and to the entire industry so to be relevant uh, this is a very difficult time and the future doesn't look bright at first glance for the hospitality industry but uh, what i want to say is uh, it's times like this which will shake off the unnecessary uh, specs of the industry the ones who are passionate will stick around because hospitality is not uh, is driven by hospitality is driven by uh, people's passion not materialistic motivation so as long as you're passionate about what you're doing and you love what you do this is the industry for you so don't worry just hang in there thank you very much kevin thank for joining you. with us hospitality is not a job it's a passion thank you very much for joining with us for the talk show we'll meet up with another 
episode. Thank you.